Welcome back guys in our last video we worked on our other factory for a little bit just to kind of give myself a break from working on all the numbers and everything that went into making our manufacturing video. Um, I, I took a little break I'm ready to get back into it and I'm ready to put the final touches on this factory and that's pretty much just to revolve around one our power structure and two creating overflow lines. Uh, we're at a point now where uh, pretty much the entire factory is not running because there's little to no overflow. Everything that's hooked up to the manufacturers and the manufacturer already filled up an industrial crate has backed everything up from the top down all the way down to constructors to smelters. Pretty much nothing is running in this factory right now. So we're going to be doing a lot of overflow lines today. Try to get all of it to resource sinks to get it dumped for anything that we don't have produced can go away so we can keep the machines running. Um, we're also going to be redoing our power lines. We have power rooms at our other factory that kind of makes it a lot easier to identify what's what. And kind of isolate the systems as of right now it's pretty much just a jumbled mess so we're working in our power room to kind of label everything to get a better understanding of what's what uh, there's just a lot of stuff to do today hopefully it should be like a regular video probably about like 20 minutes but it is going to be a lot of work for me so i'm going to be a lot of jumping around kind of showing you what i'm doing to make everything run properly all that being said uh, let's get into the video we're going to start off by trying to identify what our power lines are so I want to give you guys a quick update on the comment wall. We had two more comments for our last video. We had Mr. SCP who said nice. Stuck it over here with our other nice. Then over here we have uh, Moradin who said love the comment wall. Uh, if you guys want to be included in the comment wall, just go ahead and comment something nice down below. And uh, I'll make sure to get you guys in here by the next video. So our very first step is going to be trying to identify uh, what is actually providing power to our factory. So we pretty much have a spider web of stuff coming in. We have these lines over here. We have the lines that run to this. This is for our um, our hyper tubes over there. Then we have a truck station over here that I believe is getting power from somewhere. We have another truck station back there that actually goes to our other coal plant and I fell. So there's like four or five different interests for power over here. So we're gonna start unplugging stuff and just see what it's gonna take to get everything shut down. So uh, I'm gonna start doing that and I'll let you know when I find the one that's a problem. So over here, it looks like everything's good. It's all connected. It's not pretty. I mean, I'm not saying that it's pretty about to redo the power lines, but for the most part, it looks like this isn't going that way, which is a good sign. It's going off there, which I'll have to figure out what's up with that one. I'm hoping it's just running to the other truck station and it isn't actually a problem. But we do have this down here, which this is just a little geyser generator so we can uh, get a little bit more power hooked up. Uh, I don't want this attached to this system, which is not. So I was smart. So this is all good then. I, I want to try to make everything off of this system because this is what is running the power between the three separate facilities over here. So that's fine. I did that right. We're going to keep moving. So out front here, we just have this little stray thing, which is hooked up to the power grid, but I don't want this hooked up here. I would like the power to enter through my storage area over here, and I don't want it coming in through here, which this still has power. No, it doesn't. Okay, so is this the only way that any of this gets power? Yep, so I turned off all that through this. Which means that this needs to be connected over here. And that's uh, gotta be upgraded. All right, hold on. I got a quick wire. Oh, no, uh, no. All right, like nothing ever happened. So we hook this up here and this should power all that. Which is good. So we're already heading in the right direction. We get rid of this power line. Oh, well, it's hooked up still. Okay, we still have power. So that, that's a good thing. Now we have the system moving down here. And these power lines are hooked up where they need to be. So we're going to keep moving around the base until we get it down to just one of them. Okay, on the inside of this wall is our actual storage area quote unquote there's not really a whole lot in there but this is where i want everything to enter because on the other side of this is the actual power room um this is hooked up to this stuff down here though which is a problem but that's more of something we're going to rework internally and it's not something we're worried about outside so i've checked this whole line there is a, another geothermal generator like right there that is pulling off of this but that's really not a problem because it's technically connected into the power grid 
So I'm not worried about that at all. We're going to keep moving. It looks like this truck station, though, is already hooked up to this output as well. So that's okay, but I still would like to redo it internally because I believe on the other side of this wall are these, which this is the, the outlet, the double wall outlet that kind of runs around the inside of this manufactured room. And it, it just feels like it'd be better to hook it up there. And that way I can run it actually tied in with everything else that's going on here. Um, it doesn't need to be super isolated. It's one building, it's not a problem. So uh, I'll work on that, but that's more of internal. And I'm just trying to figure out the outside right now. So the last place to check right now is this other truck station over here and we'll see what's going on there. Okay, so here's a bigger problem that you need to watch out for. Um, I believe if we turn this off, Yeah, okay, so this drops it to its own separate system, which means that in order to connect everything that's down here, which is literally just our coal plants and like a couple of assemblers to create the compacted coal, um, this is running as its own system, and this needs to be hooked into the power uh, the power infrastructure, which is that main line we have running all the way over there. Pretty much what I did earlier was, when I made this like 10 months ago, is I just tied this in with this line, which is the line from the factory. So it's like I have two power things tucked into one area, and it's not what I want. I want all of the power uh, suppliers, the coal generators, the fuel generators hooked up to their own separate system. So everything else is pulling from that, but it's pulling on for only one thing. Because of right now, if I were to walk over there and disconnect that one little line right there, we're still gonna have 1200 megawatts of power which means there's no actual hard shutoff for the factory if I ever needed to kill everything to protect the power grid. Like, we're, we're moving into phase three soon, and when I do that, or once I do that, I'm going to get a nuclear, and then if I have a massive power outage, it's going to be hard to isolate the problem. So this is just kind of preventative maintenance for that down the line, and it can't have a system that's still getting 1,200 megawatts of power because it's never going to shut off properly unless I do two different shutoffs, which I don't want to have to do it to. Is one real simple i want the one so i'm going to have to pretty much you are so loud what is with you guys unreal so what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to take power lines or power poles if i can click on the right button and i'm going to run it all the way around actually i'll probably go this way i'm going to run it through here and then connect it in line with that over there and then disconnect this section here which should be able to create just the one input output that i want so i'm gonna rewire this whole thing i'll be back in just a second so we're over here down by this geothermal generator which i was talking about uh if i tie it into this then this means that it's tied in with this system so i literally ran it all the way down uh through the back side of this truck station and then down into the valley and disconnected anywhere else that other line was hooked up i'm gonna fall don't fall don't fall all right anyway so i hooked all this up this should be on the right power system now so i should be able to run back over there disconnected and it should not have any falter so we disconnected this line here and uh we've kind of waited a minute and nothing's dropping so that means that this power system is now hooked into our actual infrastructure which is oh made my mess messed up uh it means that everything's going to be good and we can actually go over there and test out the other line by disconnecting and see if it's going to shut down the entire factory. We should get red lights on everything as soon as I do that. So we're going to go ahead and do that and see what happens. Alrighty, moment of truth. Do we have just a bunch of red now? That's that's a great sign. It's, just, it's not good that everything's shut down, but it's a great sign because it means that our power system is working right. So this is all red. That's still green, but I think it's just because it's turned on. Yeah, see the production, the power production is trapped. It's just green for some reason, probably because it's messed up. I think it's just because it's about the wires, not about actually what's going on. Um, that's all red. Everything in here is red. So we're, it, I think it's safe to say that that worked and everything's fine. Um, now it's just a matter of reworking this mess of wires. So we're going to get started on that and I'll show you how everything works with there and uh, yeah, we're uh, making pretty good progress already. Okay, so that's all hooked up good. We disconnected uh, everything but this line, so we'll take this off right now, we'll have to go fix that. 
Uh, I ran this uh, power pole to this wall, which is going to be tied into this system right here. And we added our kind of our shutoff switch in between here. So now uh, all this is down. If I come over here and flip this into the on position, everything turns on. So now we have a lever activated manual shutoff just because we were able to work it down to the one input and everything that runs off this factory literally comes through this one switch. So now if any system arises where we have shut down the power grid, which we're already getting fairly close to, if you look at our max production compared to consumption, it's it's very high. And this is actually lowering because of us shutting off this factory. So total, this factory produces roughly about 2,000 power consumption, which is a lot. But if I can get to a part where I break all the fuses and I shut down everything, I can just flip this switch, get an automatic 2,000 megawatt drop in power, and then I should be able to flip the fuses on everything else and get it reset. So that's really, really good information. I have a similar setup over there. I just don't have the actual setup switch, which is something I'm going to update my own time because I've already reworked a lot of that stuff there. So uh, we're going to keep working on rewiring this. I know it's been a lot of talking and kind of explaining what I'm trying to do, but now it gets a lot easier and I can just kind of show you some of the wiring and labeling and then we can move on to our next step, which is going to be doing our overflow lines. Okay, so we're pretty much repeating the same steps that we did outside. We're going to a certain area, like our coal production, for uh, example, and we're going through everything and make sure that's all hooked up cleanly as much as it can be cleanly. So this looks great. Um, then we're moving it to a single output input. So this one right here runs down to the right underneath there, and it's all connected to the floor. Then it goes outside here into the wall and then into a switch. So this is our copper production. So right now, everything is turned off and it's all tied in. If we flip this switch, we have power to everything that is in this room. Uh, no, we don't because that's red for some reason. Which is why you gotta test what you're doing, because apparently I'm wrong and I need to fix this. So I'm gonna keep looking at it and see what I get done. Okay, so this is kind of... Alright, so this is kind of an example of something that needs to be separated. So I want these lights on a different system than the uh, heavy modular frame room. So there's more stuff in here. Like, um, you have the assemblers that make your encased steel beams. And you also have all your smelters back here. I'm okay with these being on the same uh, thing because they're all kind of in one area. But I want these lights separate, which means I'm going to have to do a little bit more rewiring. Um, I kind of set it up. I got the two separate lines running across there. So they're a little bit more organized and hidden as of running straight through the middle of the room. And I switched this from the actual power switch to a light control panel. So now I can mess with the colors of it and do all the cool stuff that I want to. Which I'm probably just going to leave it on white, which is a little bit dumb that I even did this. But you know what? fine with me so now if i want to turn off the lights i have to actually go into this room and mess with this uh breaker here and then now i just need to rewire this room and then i'm ready to move on to the actual center section of the base which is going to be um pretty much just across this wall here and uh so we're making good progress just want to kind of show you guys what i was doing and give you a little update so i'll be back in a second uh, i've been doing a lot but i just want to give you another quick update this is kind of the stuff that i'm running into uh, we have our iron plate production up here, and this is tied into this, which I don't even know what this is. I believe it's all this stuff in here. Oh, it's our little transport room. Okay, so, yeah, I don't even know. This might be the line that hooks up all this stuff. I'm not sure, but it does not need to be connected to that. Let's go to our new line, which is right here. So, it's, it's basically just a lot of this. I'm not going to film the entire part of me just going through and changing every little line. Uh, to what I need it to be it's just kind of going through paying attention to what stuff is and then separating it. So this is actually um, I don't know why it doesn't save this is our iron floor one and Floor two All right, so there we go. So this is uh basically our smelters and All this stuff down here. That's so our smelters and then it's uh, our iron plates up here and then we're gonna do a separate one for our screws and then we have we should have screws uh then we have our assemblers over here and then we have our computer in the other room which i might just tie that hole together so i may have uh an extra one or two switches in here which i'll probably just leave them for the aesthetic of having five across the board but we're getting real close to getting done with all this power stuff 
Okay, after a lot of rewiring and kind of organizing everything in the factory, I was able to get all these hooked up. So we have um, power production outside, main shutoff. We have lights, uh, heavy modular frame room. And over here we have iron four, one, and two, which I need to fix. Uh, iron screws, assemblers, steel production, and our computers. So at any given point, I could just shut off whatever I need to, uh, or if I really, really need to, Shut the whole thing down. The entire plant. One switch. This is awesome. Okay, so the last thing that I'm kind of worried about before we move on to our next step is the outside. Because I, as I work through the rest of it, I begin to realize there's a lot of stuff that is uh, connected to the outside. Just off of like dual nodes and stuff. Like the, the wall nodes. And I tried to disable them as I went. But I believe that the outside is not hooked up properly. So I'm going to actually shut off the outside one, which is this right here. And I'm going to go out there and see what actually has power and what doesn't so I can hook it up to the right place. So I'm going to get working on that and I'll give you an update in a second. And I was right. After I went out there and kind of checked everything, I found like three or four machines that weren't hooked up properly. So with all that being said, our factory is completely wired correctly now. Um, it, it's still not the prettiest. I mean, it's, it's going to be... The best that it can be and it's organized for the shutoffs really really well which is what what i needed to do so this is all great and i'm really happy this turned out we're gonna move on to our next step which is going to be um setting up our overflow lines which means i'm going to have to build and uh, one i have to build a way to get up to this area because i keep having to use my jetpack and it's really starting to bother me so we're gonna keep working towards uh getting everything finished i need to pretty much put a roof on the assemblers and everything up here and then i need to build the actual roof over top of this and then this factory is pretty much getting to a point where it's going to be completely done really really soon here so um my plans are to try to finish this factory before i move on to phase three just so i'm not working on this and trying to add other stuff into it as well um anyway all that being said, we're going to keep moving on with the video because I've already had like uh, 17 minutes on recording, which I messed up a little bit. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know where I'm at actually in the recording, but I, I know it's it's minimum at least 15 minutes into the video here. And I don't really want to go crazy long. So we're going to do as much as we can in the next five minutes or so. And uh, mostly probably take all that up with me rambling about random shit. So let's do it. Okay, so we actually need a place to put the resource sinks, which we're going to be putting them on top of this room. I could probably rework this floor and try to cram a couple of them in here, but I'd rather just leave this space as it is and figure it out later. So we're going to put these on the roof, and we're going to hopefully finish the roof, and we're probably going to make a separate video about the resource sinks, if I'm being honest. So um, I'm going to see what I can get done. I'm going to keep working through this. I'm going to at least finish off the top of this and probably start building the roof, and then I'll see where I'm at on time. All right, so we added the roof onto the section that I was talking about. Um, and I think I'm gonna have to add these little wing sections in here and probably move my Hyper 2 tunnel because this just throws you into the wall right now. But I put all of this on here, so this is getting really close to kind of the end of the factory and kind of, uh, you know, putting the capstone on everything that we've done so far. I still need to go through and do a lot of stuff like change colors and things and still set up the resource sinks, which I'm gonna have to do now. But uh, I think I'm actually gonna probably end the video here because this resource sink project is gonna be much bigger than I expect it to be, and I just don't think it's something I can really make happen in the course of about four minutes, and I don't think that would really be just you guys to show you pretty much what's not going on with the factory. Uh, especially if it's such a big moment, like kind of putting the end to everything here that we got. Or maybe not the end, but at least the, how we're gonna leave it for a long time, as opposed to coming back and kind of changing things. Uh, there's always more that we can add to the factory, but I don't really want to make this as, like a mid-max playthrough where I just take 10,000 iron nodes and make everything what it is and just try to get an abysmal amount of numbers. I want to make factories that look good, make them modular, and just kind of make them fit as opposed to just kind of ramming everything in here to get absurd numbers. And I, I, I'm, not, I'm not chasing the numbers. I'm chasing this trying to make it look nice make it look presentable do the best that i can to kind of build it make it all make sense to me so um anyway that's gonna be the end of the video uh make sure you guys like uh comment down below and subscribe and uh i'll see you guys later